good and wonderful news. God has free gifts for you. They are forgiveness, love, and salvation through Jesus. Learn more as your Lutheran neighbors welcome you to Worship for Shut-ins, coming to you from the Wolf Chapel on the campus of Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where pastors have been prepared for the ministry since 1846. Hope abounds. Let us all rejoice. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father draw him. What satisfies your hunger pains? I confess that I am a lover of bread, especially those dark multigrain varieties. When I eat a slice or two or three or maybe more, my hunger needs are met for a little while, but it returns. Is there something more enduring? You betcha. Leading us through these thoughts is Pastor Jim Elsner. Please join us today as Lutheran Ministries Media invites you to worship with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our psalm today is verses from Psalm 78. With upright heart he shepherded them, and guided them with skillful hand. He commanded the skies above, and opened the doors of heaven. And he rained down on them manna to eat, and gave them the grain of heaven. Man ate of the bread of the angels, he sent them food in abundance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. With upright heart he shepherded them, and guided them with his skillful hand. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. 
Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. As soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is our Old Testament reading. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John the sixth chapter. <clears throat> on the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What, what, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it was written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Here ends our gospel reading. I invite you to join me as we confess the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Countless is the number of times her mother must have heard, I'm hungry, what's to eat? Or more emphatically, I'm starving, what's there to eat? Countless were the times Mary and her siblings got off the bus after school, ran down the short driveway, and had their noses tell them before they hit the porch what there was to eat. Freshly baked bread, loaves upon loaves of it. Mary and her siblings all ate and had their fill. They were deeply satisfied, and they were starving again before supper. Eat her mom's bread, will never be hungry? Not in Mary's experience, for the insatiable hunger of Mary's family to be satisfied. Mother, give us this bread always. Mom had to repeat the multiplication of loaves over and over again, and she did. Are you hungry? My mouth begins to water just thinking about those freshly baked loaves of bread. Are you hungry? The people of our gospel text were hungry that day. The day before, they had eaten their fill till they were full. They were full because they were among the 5,000 who shared the loaves and fishes. They were full because Jesus fed them. Being full was not a common occurrence in the ancient world. Hunger was part of life in Palestine during the time of Jesus. Food was precious, hard to come by, expensive. Today, there have been great advances in agricultural technology. Fields across the world yield large crops every year. Living in a rural area, I know that agriculture is big business. It's international business with a huge impact on the world food supply. And yet, living in a rural area, I know the hunger, hungry among us. People who live on the brink of poverty, struggling to make ends meet, often worrying about the next meal. Being full at a meal at the end of the day, isn't their reality either. And so we pray, give us this day our daily bread. We seek God's presence and blessing to provide the sustenance we need to live from day to day. Martin Luther says in the small catechism, daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body all the physical necessities of life. He also says, God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers. But God desires that we recognize his bountiful provisions for us and receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. Are you hungry? God will provide for you, my friend. Your hunger may be satisfied for the moment, but it will return. Our human condition is that we are never satisfied. We hunger for the next meal to fill our tummies, and we also hunger for the pleasures and goodies of life. Think about cell phones for a moment. The one I use, I call a dumb phone. It flips open and has some big buttons for my fat little fingers to push. But there are all kinds of smartphones that have a touch screen. And then there's also a tablet. And it's like a small computer. You can take pictures with it. You can send emails with it. It's got Blu-ray and 4G, and the Lord only knows what else. These things don't last. They're tools God has provided for our use and convenience for a while. Are you hungry? Our human desire is to be satisfied. Jesus knows our needs and our desires. 
He's not unaware that we need to eat, to have shelter and clothing, but he also knows our greater needs. Don't work for food that spoils, he says. Work for food that endures. Wow. I don't know about you, but I've worked too often for spoiling food, to get and to have the things in life that are here and gone. As I grow older, I see that my home has become like a warehouse for all kinds of things and stuff I couldn't live without, a warehouse of spoiling food, as it were. But enduring food, Jesus says, is a gift from heaven. It's not grown in our fields and produced in a factory. Enduring food is the true bread that comes from God the Father. It's a spiritual commodity. It strengthens and nourishes faith. What is this enduring food? It is he who comes down from heaven. It is he who gives life to the world. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. He is the enduring food from God. Are you hungry yet? Do you desire the enduring food from heaven? The crowd in our gospel text thought they did. They thought Jesus was talking about manna like Moses gave. And so they demanded of Jesus, give us this food. But being fed on the bread of life is not like ordering in a restaurant. Jesus, the bread of life, calls us and directs us to come to him, to believe in him. That's what he's doing today, my friend. Come to me. Jesus says to you, you won't go away hungry. Believe in me, Jesus says to you, you won't be thirsty again. Jesus is calling you into a spiritual relationship with him. By his death on the cross, he's bought peace for you with God. By his resurrection, he sealed you as God's own dear child in holy baptism. He's calling you to greater faith and trust in him. He is the way God has provided for your forgiveness, for your life, for your salvation. Are you hungry? Spiritually hungry? Looking for fulfillment and satisfaction? For security and peace for your soul? Are you hungry for certain faith and trust? Coming to Jesus, believing in Jesus, satisfies our spiritual hunger and thirst. Coming in humility, in the confession of our sins, and admitting it's not about you, it's about God. Believing in Jesus, placing your trust in him, to forgive your sins and give you a new start, to refocus on the cross of Christ. Are you hungry? There are spiritual hungers only he can satisfy. There's the hunger for truth. In Christ alone is the truth of God. There's the hunger for life. In Christ alone is life more abundant there's the hunger for love. In Christ alone is the love that outlasts sin and death. Jesus Christ, the bread of life, satisfies the spiritual hunger you're feeling, my friend. He promises to fill you and satisfy you since he is the enduring food from heaven to give life to the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord unto life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, 
you've given your son, Jesus, as the bread of life for the world. Increase our hunger for him and our commitment to take him to all who hunger until everyone knows the sustaining power of your love. We pray this through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Life is like a mountain railway With an engineer so brave We must make the run successful From the cradle to the grave Watch the hills, the curves, the tunnel Never fall and never fail Keep your hands on the throttle and your eye upon the rail. Blessed Savior, Lord, I will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels pray to join us in God's grace. worship today has been made special because you have joined us in praising Jesus who is the center of our lives. If you by chance do not have a church home or pastor, please contact us at our toll-free number 1-888-286-8002 and we will do our best to put you in contact with someone in your area. Again, that number is 1-888-286-8002. I'm Don Lupke and I want you to know that Jesus loves and cares about you and hold you close to his heart. It is such a pleasure to have you join us in worship. These programs are partially underwritten by a grant from the Lutheran Legacy Foundation of Paris, Illinois, in partnership to nurture Christian faith and values to future generations. 
Contributions to this fund may be eligible for up to a 10% matching grant. Today's program is sponsored by Gifts Given in honor the 70th anniversary of Mr. and Mrs. Marvin Schrader by Daniel and Nancy Schrader of Osceola, Indiana.